Hello and welcome. This is a short introduction to our fitted mesh support in Avastar 1.6. This video series is made with Blender 2.75, and I use the Avastar 1.6 Alpha release, update 47. In this video we prepare the setup for working with fitted mesh, and then we inspect the initial fitted mesh weight maps. Step 1. Create a new default Avastar character. As a side note, if you do not have the sparkles add-on, then you only get the option to create an Avastar character with triangles. Step 2. Add the working model. Here, I use the append function to load my working model from a separate blend file which in this case contains a simple dress. Step 3. Inspect the model. This dress has already been skinned, and it contains a set of weight maps, which have been made for a subset of the well-known 26 classic Second Life Bones. Step 4. Bind the mesh. So, Let's proceed by first selecting the armature, and then shift select the dress. Now proceed by opening the tool shelf. Then open the Avastar tab, and navigate to the skinning panel. So, I already mentioned that our mesh contains weight groups, and when we bind the mesh to the armature, then we want to preserve these groups. In order to make this possible, we have added the Keep Weights option. When this option is selected, then all currently existing weight maps will be kept as they are, which is exactly what we want in this case. Please also ensure that the Attach Sliders option is enabled. This setting allows you later to test your mesh in Blender by using the Avastar appearance sliders. We get back to this in a minute. First, let's bind the dress to the armature, simply by pressing the button, Bind to Armature. By now the dress is initially set up for getting posed and animated. But note, the weight maps still refer to the classic Second Life Bones. Hence we still have to convert our model to a fitted mesh. The mesh now also contains two shape keys as you can see in the shape keys list. These shape keys are directly related to the avatar appearance sliders, and they are fully maintained by Avastar. Please never ever touch these keys. Unless you know exactly what you are doing here. Whenever you have to get rid of these shape keys, then please step into the skinning panel and that either reset the appearance control to no sliders, or select the apply sliders function. Everything else is done automatically by Avastar. Ok, let's close the skinning panel and proceed to, step 5, prepare the rig for fitting. Take care that the dress is still selected. Then open the rigging panel. In the bone visibility section select the skin preset. Disable the limits indicators, and enable stick mode. Ensure that the deform bones button is selected, and select the map filter from below the button. Now only the weighted deform bones are displayed, so you can always see which bones currently affect your mesh, and your view keeps clean and organized. Now close the rigging panel and proceed to step 6 fitting the model. By the way, we have taken care to keep related buttons close to each other and within the same panel. Hence in general only one or two panels need to be open at any time, and all other panels can be kept closed. Ok, let's open the fitting panel. Here, you find two presets for fully classic mesh, and for fully fitted mesh. The fastest way to get your fitted mesh is to just select the fully fitted preset. This preset automatically moves the existing weight maps to their corresponding collision volume bones. However the weight maps have only changed their names, but not their content. 
and because we have configured our Vistar to only show weighted bones in the viewport, now all blue second life bones have been replaced by their fitted mesh counterparts. So, in principle we are done with our fitted mesh project. However, we stepped into a huge pitfall. That is, the mesh weight maps have originally been optimized to work well for your animations with the classic second life bones. But by selecting the fully fitted preset, we have moved all weight maps to the collision volume bones. And we cannot expect that the same weight maps work nicely for animating the mesh, and for shaping it. Ok, let's check how far we messed up our model and proceed to step 7, the appearance sliders. Open the avatar appearance panel. And now let's take a look at how the appearance sliders actually influence the mesh. But note, this panel is sometimes not initialized. If this is the case for you, then you see a button labeled with, load appearance sliders. And pressing this button loads the sliders and removes the load button. Ok, the sliders are organized into sections. And one of the sections is dedicated to fitted mesh. Let's open this section. Now test how the mesh reacts on the belly slider. We see when we increase the belly slider, the dress deforms more and more into an ugly shape. This distortion is caused by the weights in your weight maps. In fact the weights on the collision volume bones are used to control the mesh shape. But when we earlier selected the fully fitted preset in the fitting panel, we have moved the weights from the second life base bones to the collision volumes. And thus, we now get a somewhat arbitrary shape as a result. So, by now it becomes very obvious that we have to add some additional work into fixing the weight maps. Actually we have to somehow distribute the weights between the classic second life bones, and the corresponding fitted mesh bones. And this is exactly what we will do in the next step.